So the Embraer outcome trial was the safety trial mandated by the EMA and the FDA for empagliflozin, which is an SGLT2 inhibitor, which reduces blood glucose by inhibiting the reuptake of glucose in the proximal renal tubule, hence causing glycosuria, and that drops blood sugars. So it's the, the latest glucose-lowering agent. So the Empereg outcome trial was the first diabetes cardiovascular trial which showed a cardiovascular benefit of a diabetes drug. So patients in the Empereg outcome trial were patients with established cardiovascular disease. They received either empagliflozin or placebo for 3.1 years, and the study showed a reduction of the primary triple MACE outcome by 14%, and this was entirely driven by a 38% reduction in cardiovascular mortality. In addition to that, there was a 35% reduction in heart failure hospitalization and a substantial benefit in pres preservation of renal function as well. So it's really established that there are glucose-lowering drugs now that can preserve and uh, at least reduce cardiovascular mortality, prevent heart failure, and protect the kidneys. And similar benefits have been shown by the other SGLT2 inhibitors, so it's likely a class effect. I think the first thing I want to make sure that we understand is that empagliflozin on its own does not cause hypoglycemia. So this, this study looked at the impact of hypoglycemia in the Empereg outcome trial, and this largely occurred in patients who were on drugs that do cause hypoglycemia. So th drugs like sulfonylureas and insulin, uh, if you combine empagliflozin with a drug that causes hypoglycemia, you're probably going to see, you're going to see a higher risk of hypoglycemia with that combination. So we looked at the, firstly at the outcome in the placebo group of the Empereg outcome trial, and we had two definitions of hypoglycemia, a broad and a strict definition. Both the definitions showed for the first time that hypoglycemia was associated with an increased risk of heart failure. In addition, for the broad definition, we showed that fatal and non-fatal myocardial infarction were increased. Hypoglycemia occurred with equal frequency in the placebo and in the Empereg outcome, uh, em Empagliflozin treated patients. All we have is the instance of hypoglycemia in uh, the other trials, and in none of the other trials was there a significant increase in hypoglycemia with the addition of an SGLT2 inhibitor. So I think we can say that the drugs are safe and if the patient develops hypoglycemia, that we should not reduce the dose of the SGLT2 inhibitor, but we should make adjustments to the other medications, particularly the sulfonylureas and insulin. So the ESC uh, diabetes guidelines go further towards a personalized uh, treatment of patients with diabetes. So you should assess their cardiovascular risk, whether the patient has established disease or just has risk factors. If the patient has established disease, then you should certainly use first line, a, an agent which reduces cardiovascular risk, and that, are, that is today the SGLT2 inhibitors and the GLP-1 agonists. On the other hand, if the patient has uh, just cardiovascular risk factors, then you could probably use any glucose-lowering uh, agent to, uh, as first-line agent. However, uh, the SGLT2 inhibitors have been shown to be safe in these studies, and it's not a bad, they're not bad agents, they're very well tolerated uh, to use either first or second line, and that, that is promoted by the new ESC guidelines. So I think the, the extension to other groups of patients, and we will see at this meeting the results of the DECLARE heart failure trial in which patients with and without diabetes were treated with uh, dapagliflozin, 
and uh, we know that the primary outcome was met, so it, at least these drugs reduce hospitalization for heart failure and cardiovascular mortality. We will soon see the results of the, uh, a, a, the trials with empagliflozin, and the EMPEROR trials, so we will know whether SGLT2 inhibitors are beneficial in patients with established heart failure. Then there are ongoing studies in patients with established renal disease, uh, patients with fairly severe renal dysfunction. Uh, are there benefits in preserving renal function and reducing cardiovascular events? So these are very important questions in patients who are extremely high risk of uh, uh, adverse effects of diabetes.